Take 10,000 more and I'm having some interview. Seriously. <laughs> I need lines. Jesus Christ. Famous people have lines. I don't have lines. Not famous. Um, action. Dead puppies. Dead puppies. Okay, I don't talk about dead puppies. Wait, where did I even put it? I put it right here, but where didn't I? Yeah, that's it. But I was standing over the phone. Yeah, cause I'm a dude. You, you have, have like, those. like, like those cut thingies. But like in the beginning of the video, you see, you see the. And action. action. <laughs> Good morning, St. Anthony section. <laughs> <laughs> what are you even looking at? Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I needed that. Okay. Hello. Okay, laugh it Hello, St. Anthony Secondary School. I'm here with Jordan Smith, one of the many victims of human trafficking. Hello, Jordan. Hi, thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure. Jordan is originally from Connecticut, yeah. which is known for its animals and its beautiful scenery. However, what many people don't know about Connecticut is its heavy involvement in the human trafficking industry. Jordan is here to bring awareness by sharing her story and how she got involved in the human trafficking industry. So Jordan, tell me about your background life. Okay, well, this all started when I was about 18 years old and I was at a rough place and desperately I got into some prostitution. Nothing too serious, I wasn't committed to it and that is what led me up to my experience in the trafficking industry. What series of events led up to your involvement in human trafficking? Okay, well, I was having a regular day at work and a man dressed up in a business suit looking very professional came and offered me a modeling contract and it seemed legit. All the agencies and fancy words, it just seemed completely realistic. So I thought that I just got lucky and was getting offered an insanely wonderful modeling contract. And you took it? I took it, yes. Do you know where your final destination was? It started in Connecticut and uh, the day after he met me the first time he asked for me to meet him in a cafe so we could discuss more things and I did and then we talked more about the agency and you know it was a solid yes for me and then he organized my trip and paid for my accommodation and I was tri shipped off to New York City on my own starting what I thought was going to be an amazing experience. Um, so what type of work did you do when you got there? When I first got there, I went to a, what I didn't know at the time, a fake studio and they started with regular photo shoots. Wait, I'm sorry if you don't mind me asking yeah. by the name of, what was the name of the studio? Um, you can so I think from my memory it was some Metropolitan Models in New York City. It was, I even researched a bit and seem completely realistic right now is there any money being owed between you and this man like does he still owe you anything or? he owes me back about five years of my life that's what he owes me um i i don't think so money isn't really a big matter for me after what i've been through it's if he owes me money i don't care really understand. Yeah, understand. so jordan were you being made to do things that you more interested in doing, or you being forced to do the thing, or um, with the modeling, it was regular, it was fun, it was every young girl's dream. I had a great time, but as soon as trafficking started, it was all against my own will. But I had no say in the matter. They were like, I was like a pet, and they all owned me, so I couldn't do anything. How did your escape go about? Um, what I didn't know was that they'd actually been looking for this industry for years. Um, governments and police departments, they were working on this. And this information wasn't available while, while you were No, I had no idea. I thought I'd be spending the rest of my life in the hands of these monsters. So how are you um, psychologically? Um, I wouldn't say I'm perfectly fine because that would be a lie, but I'm getting better with each day. Um, I have people around me who are supporting me and helping me get through this. Um, it's a very traumatizing experience it was it's awful but it's not something that I can use what happened to help others so I'm trying to put positive positivity into my, into my situation that's very fantastic thank you very much for sharing your story it was a pleasure. Um, so do you have any words for um, little girls out there or 
previous um, victims of green yeah. trafficking. Um, I'd just like to say that human trafficking is not a joke. It's very serious and occurs worldwide and everyone needs to be careful. It's not specific it's not specified for young girls or prostitutes or any gender or race. It happens absolutely everywhere and you all need to just be extremely careful who you trust and talk to and where you go and just always try to be one step ahead of those monsters because they are very smart and evil. <laughs> so to be careful but hopefully no one has to go through this as much anymore with all the awareness and police work and yeah so hopefully that should that's all just be careful that's it okay this is a huge step to the demolition complete demolition of human trafficking i'm really glad it's, it's, no one should have to experience it right so thank you so much for thank sharing you for your story me. It was lovely being here. Jordan. okay um Thank you everyone for watching and I wish you all a good rest of the week. Okay. Alright. Alright.